Hey guys, well for this video I'm doing something just a little different from the usual stuff that I do, you know, like the usual going out and about doing vlogs and all that kind of thing. Yeah, so the purpose of this video is to take a little look at uh, my four reasons why I choose to shoot using the Micro Four Thirds camera system. Now, I've been shooting with Micro Four Thirds as a camera system for five years now, so, and uh, yeah, I've always found it a really good system to use. I've had very little complaint about it. Yeah, so in this video, I'll go through my reasons why I chose the system and, you know, what really appeals to me about it, so. Okay, so my first reason is compact size. Yeah, because the Micro Four Thirds camera system offers a very compact size of camera. And it's obviously it's quite a skilled in version of what you would get from a typical DSLR, whether it be Canon or Nikon. So, yeah, but a lot of uh, the mirrorless system cameras are now quite getting quite small anyway. They're getting smaller on size, so Micro Four Thirds doesn't really quite hold on to that mantle on its own anymore. Because, you know, a lot of the, like, Fuji and uh, the likes of Fuji and Sony have uh, kind of followed suit in that regard anyway. So, but Micro Four Thirds... I think led the way in, in terms of the, the compact system cameras, you know, because that's, I think obviously Panasonic came out with the first mirrorless camera eh, back in 2008, I think, probably earlier before than that. But suffice to say for me that the Micro Four Thirds eh, system, when it comes to compact size, it's definitely a big advantage of that system for me. So it also cuts down the weight factor, reduces the, the amount of bulk and weight that you would be carrying in your camera bag when you're out and about. So that's obviously another big bonus of the compact size. It lessens the weight. So yeah, you can carry a whole bunch of lenses and a camera body and it would probably, and it would easily be a fraction of the weight of what it would be if you carried a big DSLR with a bunch of lenses. In fact, as an example, just to show you the size of uh, one of the, the, the cameras that I use, it's the, well, in fact I'll show you them both, the mirrorless cameras I use. First up is the Lynx GX80, which is it's a terrific little camera. This is an excellent little camera. And I've been using this for about two years now, and it's it really is absolutely terrific. It, it does, it shoots video, and it shoots stills just as well as each other, so. And of course my other camera is, is the Olympus EM1, so the, the Olympus EM1 here, which has the kind of DSLR styling. It's actually, again, quite a small, fairly small compact camera, probably f relatively big for a Micro Four Thirds camera, but it's still a very compact, neat camera, and it weighs just body only just under 500 grams, so again, very light for what it does. And this is it's definitely an absolutely excellent camera, one of my favourite cameras I've ever bought, and I regularly use it for most of my photography anyway, so yeah. And again, it's a good example the compact nature of Micro Four Thirds. The compactness, of course, of the system also comes with the lenses, and you get plenty of really compact lenses for that for this system. You know, here are a couple of examples. It's the I've got two Olympus lenses here. Yeah, so these these two lenses are this one's 25 mm f1.8 lens, so it's quite a fast prime aperture lens. This is a macro lens, which is uh, is a 30 mm f3.5 lens. Again, both these lenses are really compact and they offer excellent image quality as well so anyway so there you go these two lenses show definitely show off the compact nature of, of the Micro Four Thirds camera system and they're both excellent for what they do. Now number two is affordability. Now affordability well this is to be fair quite a debatable one because you know a lot of the different manufacturer systems out there whether it be Fuji, Canon, Nikon or Sony all offer fairly competitive um, prices when it comes to different ranges of cameras so obviously high-end cameras are going to cost a lot more so and uh, Micro Four Thirds also does have its fairly expensive quite expensive high-end bodies like the Lumix GH5 and the Olympus EM1 uh, Mark II are both uh, around about the £1500 mark so definitely not cheap but I suppose you have to also I guess take into account that both these uh, camera systems offer a lot of um, technology and a lot of high tech that's thrown into these cameras so that has to kind of bump up the price of course so but yeah for me personally i find that the micro four thirds camera system is quite affordable and uh, the the bodies that i've got here that the i've mentioned the lomix gx80 i got for just under 300 pounds uh mind you it was second hand but again it's fairly affordable and also the olympus em1 
uh, the original one came out well it's a good five years ago now but the the camera body i got it for just under 500 pounds so again that's uh, two camera bodies at reasonable prices and uh, yeah i think that they are definitely quite affordable same again for the lenses the lenses that are available and on offer are definitely quite affordable and uh, you can get really decent ones from you know upwards of probably even starting with say 100 120 up to x thousands amounts of pounds but <laughs> it depends how far you want to spend but but i think the bottom line is the system is definitely quite affordable for the most part so and again it's it's one of the things that appeals to me about it okay so at number four is hang on number four i missed out number three ah Hold on, there's a reason for that, I'll get to it a bit later. Okay, so at number four is lens selection. And I put lens selection as a good reason because a, there is a big, vast selection of lenses available in the Micro Four Thirds system. It's really got a really diverse um, collection of lenses because it's a well-established system. It's been around for 10 years now. So there's um, no shortage of choice, whether it be from the, the ultra wide angle, wide angle, um, spectrum up to the, the telephoto extreme telephoto lens um, spectrum as well so you're, you're, certainly, you're certainly well catered for with the system from both ends and there's also not just Panasonic and Olympus making the, the lenses there was also other manufacturers that have uh, contributed and made lenses for micro four thirds yeah both Sigma and Samyang have contributed towards micro four thirds uh, cam system for lenses and they offer some really good wee lenses as well. I've got Samyang 7.5mm fisheye lens and uh, yeah it's a, it's a terrific little lens. Again though the, these manufacturers make it for different um, companies as well so they'll adapt these lenses for uh, different mounts for like uh, for example Sony and also for Fuji they've also done the same sort of thing so but the, the fact is you've still got a big array of a big collection of lenses to choose from for this system and uh, you certainly can't go wrong for choice because everything from the Olympus primes which are excellent quality even to like, the Panasonic primes as well and there's also the pro level lenses and uh, yeah all of them are from my experience for the most part optically have been excellent so I don't really have any complaints about the image quality at all from them so so yeah I think that's uh, a good reason to put on the list So, in number three, yep, number three, is aspect ratio. Now, the reason I've chosen this one is because it kind of boils down to personal preference at the end of the day, um, in terms of the, how you like the ratio of your image to appear. So, the reason why I've chosen aspect ratio is a good one is because I like shooting in that 4x3 format, which is what the, which is the format which the Micro Four Thirds uses. Um, hence, the, the kind of, it's kind of built into the name, I suppose, like M43 is the abbreviation for it. So. Now 4x3 is a very square format so you're getting a kind of square picture whereas for example 3x2 which is used primarily for APS-C and full frame cameras it's a kind of more rectangular image and that also brings in another really good thing about micro four thirds is you actually have the option usually on these cameras to shoot between the different formats anyway so you don't need to just shoot uh, 4x3 you can shoot 16x9 um, and also you've got the option for 3x2 as well. Think Mac Panasonic offers one to one as well probably also I think the Olympus does but you've got the option to shoot in these different formats whether it be 4x3, 16x9, 3x2 or the one to one but so yeah again it's a, it's, a, it's a very appealing factor so there you go okay guys well thanks for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed it it's a little different from what I usually do in the channel so yeah, and uh, it might also be maybe food for thought for um, if you'd like to consider using the Micro Four Thirds camera system, then it's definitely still a viable option. I don't think Micro Four Thirds is ready to go out just yet. So, oh yeah, and if you're wondering why I put four in front of three on the list, it's because it's basically a kind of daft way of working in the whole thing to do with Micro Four Thirds, abbreviation being M43. So I thought I'd just have a bit of fun with that and put reason four in front of three. That's all it is. Right after all, but there you go. Just want to do that for a bit of fun. So that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, this is me, Kenny, saying bye for now, and I'll see you soon.